Good morning. I was looking through the beehives, checking the trays this morning to have a look and see what's going on. I noticed there's lots of small hive beetles and one hive in particular, which is this hive on the end, the hive beetles are actually getting to the point where they're damaging the hive. So what we're going to do today is show you how to trap those hive beetles using the multifunctional tray that comes with the Flow Hive 2. So if you come here and have a look by opening the, the vented cover, you can see the way I picked it up is I could see a lot of movement in the tray. And what that is, is lots and lots of small hive beetle maggots. It's uh, really quite disgusting. And what else you can see is the larvae of, so it's the, uh, the larvae have, have just started to go through metamorphosis and the hive beetle maggots have crawled through and really damaged them. And then they get ejected by the bees and down through the screen bottom board into here. So um, it's not a good thing. This hive has lots of bees. If you open the windows, you can see there's plenty of bees, so I'm not too worried, it will recover. However, if your hive has not many bees to manage the situation, then it may go down in a pile of, of maggots, which is not a very pretty thing to clean up and you lose your colony of bees. So what we're going to do is clean out this tray, fill it with oil and put it back in so that we can start catching those hive beetles before they get a chance to lay eggs in the hive. You can see some beetles around here. There's one there. So that's what they look like, little black beetles. And what they do is each beetle is capable of laying thousands of eggs in the combs. They like to, to, to feed on that, the honey, the pollen and the brood as they go through their own larvae stage. Then what happens is those maggots usually fall out of the hive into the ground where they, um, where they live and then eventually emerge as a beetle. So what you need to do is clean this out, pour all of these maggots into a bucket of water. They will then drown and uh, find yourself a, a clean out your tray. Here's one I prepared earlier. And then using any cooking oil at home, I use the uh, waste vegetable oil from the chip shop because I also run my car off that. So I've got plenty of that oil at home. What I'm going to do is simply pour some oil into the tray, filling up each compartment with just uh, a bit of oil like that. Okay, so once we've covered all the surfaces, we can then slide that back in. Now a little tip, when you slide this back in, just have a look in here to make sure bees haven't crawled under the screen. Now some hives like this one are a little bit sneaky and we've pulled the tray out and some bees have gone underneath. So what I'm going to need to do is brush them away before I slide that in. And I can see some under there now. There we go. Wear gloves if you're new to beekeeping. You don't want to get any stings. So I'm just brushing those bees away. And now we're good to slide the tray back in. Make sure you put your cover back on. We don't want any bees going into that cavity or they will also die in the cooking oil. So hopefully tomorrow we'll see some hive beetles dying in that oil. If you come down here, I'll show you what it looks like when you have been catching some beetles. Now, if I slide the, the tray out, you can see the, um, the small hive beetles here that are dying in the oil. So that's how to catch some small hive beetles. Now there are other ways. If you've got questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll answer them at the end. There are plenty of other ways to catch beetles. I've got a video of how to use like the underside of a, a cheap tablecloth, which is like a, a fuzzy kind of um, material and the small hive beetles legs actually get snagged in that and they end up, end up dying that way. So you might choose instead of using oil to use 
uh, material that actually catches the high beetle's legs. Other people use diatomaceous earth in the tray, which is another thing you can do. And that's like, to us it feels like a fine powder, but to the beetles it's like glass in their joints and, and they die. But again, there's many ways to catch, um, catch beetles in your hive. But uh, we have this tray now in Flow Hive 2, which you can use the cooking oil method to catch your beetles. Any questions? Colette is saying, thank you for showing a treatment-free way to get rid of hive beetles. Okay, not a problem at all. Um, what I also wanted to do here is show you the difference between small hive beetle maggots that so you can identify. Now, if a big one like that is most likely the wax moth. Um, and you can tell if you look really closely, the small hive beetle has a little red forked tail. The small hive beetle maggot has a little red forked tail, whereas the, uh, the wax moth are usually a fair bit bigger and they don't have that uh, red tail. So that's how you can tell if you're trying to work out what it is in your tray. You get wax moth sometimes, not usually a problem. The moths have flown in just to make use of the wax in the tray. Um, and they're not actually inside your hive, harming your hive. However, these maggots have all been ejected from the hive, fallen through the screen and into the tray. It's really nice to have this tray because with the core float slider in our classic model, you wouldn't have necessarily noticed this because they would wriggle out and into the ground. Cedar, what do you recommend people do if they do just have a, the core float slider? So I'd recommend using the, uh, the fuzzy tablecloth method, or you can find a, a tray that's, um, whether it's a, a, a lunchbox lid or something like that, which you can slide in between the core flute slider and the mesh. So you can try catching them like that um, it, with the oil method, or you can um, use the, the method with the, the fuzzy tablecloth. Some people use pesticide traps, that's up to you. If you are going to use pesticide traps, then put them um, underneath the screen. That way, there's no chance of that pesticide getting actually into the hive if it rains and so on, because the last thing you want to do is get a uh, pesticide into your beehive. I'll put a link to the tablecloth method in the comments. Okay, great. And you can use that also with Flow Hive too. If you prefer to keep your tray, um, tray clean, then you could run your tray the other way up with the tablecloth method on top of the, uh, the, the bottom side and that way your tray stays nice and clean. It's up to you. Running it this way up, you do get a lot of stuff catching in the tray, which is some maintenance you need to clean out. You'll get, you'll get debris building up and mould and it's, it's like any, any animal husbandry. If you've got a, a tray underneath where they're living, it will get quite dirty, something to clean out. Okay, thank you very much for watching and tune in again the same time next week.